They have released 13 studio albums and sold 30 million worldwide. They are considered to be the major influence on alternative rock, goth and even new wave. The band's sound has evolved and changed throughout the years. Starting off as a post-punk band similar to Wire or Gang of Four before morphing into a gothic rock band in the early 80s. They went from being a synth group in the mid 80s to a power pop group in the mid 90s with tracks like Friday I'm In Love. The big fuzzy hair and smudged lipstick makes this band instantly recognisable and iconic. This is the brief history of The Cure. Formed in 1976 and originally called Easy Cure. After many numerous lineup changes throughout the years, the founding members of The Cure met at Nostradam Middle School in Crawley. Their first performance in public was at an end of year show in 1973 as members of a one off school band called Obelisk. And in January 1976, while at St. Wilfrid's Comprehensive School, Robert Smith played guitar along with three other school friends. They called themselves Malice and rehearsed David Bowie, Jimi Hendrix and Alex Harvey covers in a local church hall. At the tail end of 1976, Malice played a couple more shows before they decided on a change of name. Robert Smith had seen something about David Bowie cutting up phrases from their songwritings into strips and reassembling them into new phrases for song lyrics. So they cut up their song lyrics and put them into a hat. The first fragment pulled out would be the name of the band. It seemed both democratic and punky all at the same time. The first scrap of paper pulled out said Easy Cure from a song partially written by Lowe Tolhurst. Fed up of unreliable singers, Robert Smith finally decided to take over the mantle of vocalist by the summer of 1977, meaning the new lineup was now Robert Smith on guitar and vocals, Paul Thompson on guitar, Michael Dempsey on bass and Lowe Tolhurst on drums. They immediately began writing and demoing their own songs and by 1977 they started playing throughout southern England to an ever-growing army of fans. And then in 1978 their Easy was dropped from the name and the eager trio now became known as simply The Cure. They were then quickly signed to Chris Parry's new record label Friction. Guitarist, vocalist and chief songwriter Robert Smith has remained the only consistent member throughout the band's history. The Cure's debut album, Three Imaginary Boys, was released in 1979 along with several early singles. This placed the band in the post-punk and new wave movements that had sprung up in the United Kingdom. With their second album, 17 Seconds, the band adopted an increasingly darker and tormented style, which together with Robert Smith's stage look, had a strong influence on the emerging genre of gothic rock. The Cure's most successful album, Disintegration, was initially dismissed by their US record label, Electrica, as commercial suicide. The record label felt that Robert Smith was being willfully obscure, which was an actual quote from a letter from the company. The album went on to sell 2.7 million copies. James O'Barr, creator of the comic book The Crow, was a big fan of The Cure. In fact, he dedicated a full page of his book to reprinting the lyrics to their song The Hanging Garden from the band's fourth album, Pornography. 
When the 1994 film based on the comic was in production, James O'Barr asked The Cure for the use of the song Robert Smith was in turn a fan of The Crow and instead wrote a complete new song, Burn for the film. The track was written while the band only had two members, Robert Smith and drummer Boris Williams. It was completed in only two days. The Cure's mix of atmospherics, heartache and passion in a way that resonated with songs like The Drowning Man and A Forest. They were so different to anything else you was likely to hear and told dark stories that were fitting for the era. In a similar vein, this next artist's lyrics resonated with her fans. Coming up in this next video, Amy Winehouse. 